June 21st. It is a shot day. I did wait uh, five days to do my shot this week. It has not been a great week for me. Um, my heart palpitations have come back with a vengeance to the point where I went to the ER yesterday. Um, I I thought I was taking care of them with the increase in magnesium and suddenly they're happening all day, every day. So um, as is typically the case when I have had to go to the ER in the past, the frequency of the palpitations were really minimal and uh, they, they feel that it's just PVCs. They want me to wear a Holter monitor for a couple weeks just so they can see what my burden level is. So now I'm just waiting for um, the cardiology department to call me to pick up the monitor. I've worn one before, like four or five years ago. Um, yeah. So I was kind of putting off doing the injection because I thought maybe, but since it's at the end of the five days, I would figure that if I was getting PVCs from the injection that the effect would be lessening because I should have less of it in my system now. And because they are still happening all the time, um, I'm kind of thinking it's probably not because of the shot. I did weigh myself this morning. It, uh, I am at, what was it, 252.8. That is a five pound loss from the last time um, I weighed in. I don't know, maybe such a quick weight loss over this week has triggered it. I, I don't know, because I'm doing less. You'll remember I'm doing less milligrams. I'm doing three and a half milligrams because the idea was I was going to be doing three and a half every four days instead of five every five. Um, so the increase in weight loss is interesting. I'm also taking um, a bunch of supplements like the L-carnitine and the magnesium, um, my vitamin D still. I did get my results back from my uh, hormonal blood draw. And at the time, my vitamin D has increased like six months ago. I was at 20 seven, I think something like that. And I'm at 52 ish right now. They would still like to see me in the seventies, but that's, I mean, that's a good increase, right? Um, so that's good. Uh, my testosterone and estrogen and all that kind of stuff are exactly where she would want to see them. She said, so she does not want to do any hormone replacement therapy at this point. I was just reading something about how a decrease in estrogen can increase uh, PVCs. So maybe my typical estrogen level is a little bit higher and it's at a, a lower point right now, even though um, on average where my estrogen is, it's average okay, but maybe for me it needs to be higher. I don't know. I don't know. So um, I'm going to go ahead and take my shot and then I'll be right back. Okay, I've already swabbed my leg. Um, I put this to 17. And this thing is kind of hard to inject. So that's the end of that. Back to zero. Okay, so that was three and a half milligrams. Um, So kind of a bummer of a week. Um, typically when I have heart palpitations, I don't want to go anywhere or do anything because they freak me out. I um, try to tell myself that, you know, so many people live with PVCs and 
for the most part, <clears throat> excuse me, unless you're having them like, um, you know, unless you're having them like 25% of your heartbeats per day, it doesn't actually weaken the integrity of your heart muscle. After about 25% of your heartbeats per day, it can start to affect it. And I don't believe that mine are at that stage. So I'm trying just to go through and live life normally, but it's scary. And I hate the way they feel. And uh, it's not great. I have a cold right now. Maybe that's also affecting it. <clears throat> Excuse me. I, the last few days, not yesterday, but a couple days before that, I was taking a, like a NyQuil cough and cold, cold and flu, whatever, a nighttime thing. And just today, I read that um, like decongestants and antihistamines can sometimes trigger PVCs. Maybe that's why it has been so bad the last few days. That could be something. I don't know. Um, weight loss wise, five pounds. I'm pretty pleased about that. Um, especially with having so many weeks of either going up a few ounces or only going down a few ounces. Five pounds is pretty sweet. Hopefully I can continue that trend. I don't really know what I'm doing different food-wise. Um, the last couple days, I have not been eating as much just because I've basically been holed up in my bedroom, not wanting to go anywhere or do anything. Um, I've been drinking a lot of homemade chicken stock. Oh, before I forget, we went to a play called Girl from the North Country. It was the last of the Broadway shows from this season. It, I understood it to be a play that was going to be based on um, Bob Dylan songs. And I did recognize a couple of the songs. They definitely, um, they changed them up. I mean, you can kind of recognize what they were, but definitely, it, <coughs> excuse me, definitely a different style. I will say positively that the cast had great voices and the acoustics, the way that they um, set the levels for everything was real, real good. That's pretty much the extent of the positive reviews that I can give for that play. It was super depressing, which, you know, sometimes plays are, right? But uh, it didn't, I don't know. And I had heard ahead of time that people had in previous shows, they just like walked out because they didn't like it. And I was like, what? We had that happen in our show. Um, a number of folks left at intermission and then just didn't come back, which I, I'm like, I paid for this. I'm going to sit here and watch it all. I've seen some pretty poor performances. And if I didn't leave for those, I'm not leaving for this. And uh, I would not recommend it to anybody. It definitely was not like a love letter to Bob Dylan songs. Um, Some of the songs didn't match what was happening in, in the play. But it just felt like a way to kind of slot it in, like the hurricane, you know. I don't feel like it really matched at all. Some of the plot was a little confusing because they would say something, but then something didn't happen. I don't know. I mean, if you want to see it, go for it. But I would not recommend Girl from the North Country. I do not know how it got to be a Broadway play, maybe off-Broadway, I could see. Again, the, the actors, they were great. They Their voices were very well. Sometimes I've been to plays and maybe they're a little bit pitchy or the they don't have the level set right, so you can't hear everybody all at once kind of a thing. And these were, these were that part was well done. The stagecraft, they had these, uh, like a projector screen on like the, I feel like it was like the left half of the um, of where the seats were. And sometimes they would have like a, an image on it, but it didn't really seem to go with what was happening. Like maybe it would be like this really depressing kind of like outdoor prairie scene, but nobody was outside and they would only do it every once in a while. So it's not like it was just like a backdrop to it, like a, against the whole stage. It was just like part of it. Super weird. 
So yeah, girl from the North Country, I would not, I would say don't waste your money on that one. I uh, watched Hitman on Netflix. It's got, what's his name? Glenn, Glenn something. He's been in quite a few shows lately. Um, he's adorable, right? Yeah. That one was entertaining. It, he, it's about a, like a professor, um, a philosophy professor who starts doing some side work for the police, um, like planting bugs and things like that and getting recordings. And then he has to pretend to be a hitman. And that's where the title comes from. Um, I, I enjoyed the majority of it. I did not like the ending of it too much. I'm not going to give anything away, but that just, I didn't enjoy that. And it, it, actually it's based, based off of a true story. They did tweak some things. Um, I don't know how much the romance part of it, <coughs> excuse me, in the, the Netflix movie, how much that happened in real life. I don't know. But the story in general is based on a, a real guy's story. So that's kind of, that was kind of interesting. Now I'm watching America's Sweethearts on Netflix. It's a documentary series about how Dallas cowboy cheerleaders get chosen, like making the cut kind of a thing. Um, something I learned was that uh, professional cheerleaders don't make much money. They make like $150 when they um, perform at a game. I can't, they haven't talked about if they get paid for practicing, but basically a lot of these girls, they've got full-time jobs that they're doing. You know, they're one lady's an orthodontist. There's a, um, a vet, a veterinarian. There's just someone works in finance. Like they do, like their nine to five is finance, but they are having then to go practice like seven to 10 PM. All, it seems like on their own dime, and they're like brand ambassadors and stuff. And I feel like they're, they do a lot of work and they injure themselves, like their hips. A lot of them have to end up getting like knee replacements or hip replacements from doing the splits and doing things like that. They should be getting paid for that. It's especially with as much, um, I don't want to say notoriety, but what they bring to the game. Cause some people, I mean, they go for the football, right? But they also go for the cheerleaders. They like to ogle and watch and see the performances that they do and they can rev the crowd up and stuff. I think they deserve more for their time than $150. You could do that just Ubering around for the day, you know, or for a couple hours. But yeah, I, I figured that they made more money than that. So I thought that was kind of interesting. All right. That is all for me today. Keep your fingers crossed. I'm not a religious person, but if you are, go ahead and pray for me. I figure any good vibes sent out there on my behalf, I will take. And, you know, fingers crossed that we can figure out what is causing the misfiring to happen to create these PVCs and hopefully get a handle on that. All right, guys. See you next time. Bye.